Hello, welcome to the Moon Scarab channel. My name is Ramon. On this video, we will talk about Tassiomancy. We will talk about what it is, its origins, and how to read tea leaves or coffee grounds using a cup. So, let's get started. Tassiomancy, also known as Tassiography, Tessology, or Tassiology, is a divination method that interprets patterns, symbols, and imagery from tea leaves, coffee grounds, or wine sediments as gritty residue left behind in a drinking vessel. The word originates from the Arabic word tas, meaning cup or bowl, and the Greek suffix mansi, meaning divination, so it's divination by cup. The origins of tasumancy is uncertain. Tea has been with humanity for a very long time. It is believed that the practice of reading fortunes in tea leaves originated in China many centuries ago. One story of its origin suggests that a group of friends sat and spoke about their affairs as they shared a pot of tea, before someone realized that the tea leaves in the bottom of their cups reflected the topics of their conversation. As tea was introduced to India, Europe, and the rest of the world, the art of tassiomancy infiltrated too in many different cultures. Tassiomancy became popular in Europe during the 17th century after tea found its way to England through newly expanding trade routes with China. Among the first Europeans to embrace the practice were the traveling Roma people, who sometimes offered their services door to door for a fee. Let's stop here for a second. When I say Roma people, I'm not talking about the people from the Roman Empire. I'm talking about the Romani people, also known as gypsies. Roma gypsies originated in the Punjab region of northern India and entered Europe between the 8th and 10th century of the Common Era. They were called gypsies because Europeans mistakenly believed they came from Egypt. On occasion, Victorian ladies will bring Roma women into their homes for readings. Victorians wishing to learn more about this form of divination reached for a copy of the publication Teacup Reading and Fortune Telling by Tea Leaves, which originally appeared in 1881. I included in the description below a link of a free e-copy, which you can print for personal reference. This is the earliest known English book on the topic. Authored by someone identified only as a highland seer, teacup reading includes descriptions of common tea leaf patterns and a small bit of history about spay wives, which were traditional Scottish tea leaf readers. The term also applies to the reading of coffee grounds practiced in the Middle Eastern tradition. This form of divination first appeared in the Ottoman palaces in the 1500s. When they were bored, the concubines in the Ottoman harem used to drink coffee and tell each other fortunes and chit-chat and gossip. So enough of the history and let's take a look of how Tassiomancy works. So how does it work? After you drink your cup of tea or coffee, you're left with remains of residue. Just like scrying, Patterns on the residue are interpreted as images, depending on the context of the inquiry. So, what do you need? If you're using tea, you will need the following. 1. A teacup. The best kind for divination purposes is a rounded cup with a handle and a smooth, shallow bowl. Porcelain or ceramic tea vessels are often favored during tea divination because they are neutral in energy, which won't affect the energy of the tea itself. Solid white or pale color is ideal, so the leaves will contrast against the cup and make the shapes and symbols easily visible. Simple, unadorned styles are best because they are less distracting, allowing you to focus on the patterns and symbols in the tea leaves. 2. A saucer is mandatory. 3. Boiling water. Always be careful when handling boiling water. 4. Loose tea. It is recommended to use either simple loose black tea leaves or an aromatic blend that tantalizes your senses. These types of loose tea leaves residues will form better patterns to interpret. Tea bags or their contents are not recommended. Tea leaves contents from tea bags are too finely cut to create identifiable forms. 5. A tea kettle. It's not necessary, this is optional. If you choose to use a tea kettle, you'll need to be sure that there is no built-in strainer on the spout that prevents the tea leaves being poured into your cup along with the liquid. Stir the pot before you pour so there are lots of leaves in the brew. Method. 
Put a teaspoon of loose tea leaves directly into your cup. Pour boiling water over it and let it steep for 3 or 4 minutes. If you choose to read using coffee grounds, Turkish coffee is the best for this. You'll need 1. Turkish coffee. It leaves a thick sediment which can be richly interpreted. 2. A sesve or ibrik which consists of a small pot with a long handle and a pouring lip designed to brew delightful Turkish coffee. 3. A light colored cup. 4. A saucer. 5. Cold water. If you don't have experience making Turkish coffee, I will link a video below on how to make Turkish coffee. It's delicious, easy to make, and fantastic for divination purposes. Now for both tea leaf readings or coffee ground readings, you'll need number six, a suitable environment. A quiet and peaceful location can create a conductive environment for tea leaf or coffee ground readings because it's important that the reader is in a calm state of mind. Lighting, background music, and calming scents can aid in your reading to promote a soothing environment. And of course, seven, the querent which is the person seeking answers in the divination practice, whether it'll be you or someone else. But before we go further, let's talk about the anatomy of a cup. What does each part of a cup signify? Time zones. The cup is divided in different time zones that can help you illustrate, one, timing, how quickly something will happen, two, connection, a symbol or physical distance between two people, and also intensity, for example, Leaves on the rim may suggest life-changing events. Tea leaves near the handle suggest events related to the querent's immediate surroundings, whereas tea leaves directly across the handle or north can symbolize external issues and outside influences. The handle of the teacup serves an important function. It's the energy conduit that connects the physical and abstract realms. It also symbolizes the querent and should be positioned south, closest to the querent, so how is tea leaf readings or coffee ground readings performed? Step one, summon your source. The drink does not have occult powers. Neither does the cup that holds it. They are merely messengers. For the message itself, you can invoke your higher power. Step two, ask your question. Take a deep breath. Drink the liquid while thinking about your question. Try to drink the tea or the coffee in one go, but slowly so that the question can be asked intently. Specificity is very important here, so be sure to formulate a clear and concise question, or if you're doing the reading for someone else, that they do. Remember, a general question will yield a general answer. Step three, seal the image. When the temperature is right, the querent should begin sipping the tea as they continue to contemplate their question. When there is about a tablespoon of liquid remaining in the cup, they can begin the swirling and turning ritual. Holding the cup in the left hand, swirl it three times counterclockwise from left to right. Next, also with the left hand, slowly and carefully invert the cup over the saucer. Some people prefer to cover the cup with the saucer and turn both upside down, but see which works best for you. Leave the cup upside down for approximately one minute, then rotate it three times counterclockwise. Then tap three times to ask your higher power once again to open your mind to reveal the images and messages. Turn the cup back upright, positioning the handle towards you. The tea leaves should be stuck to the cup in a variety of shapes and clusters, embedded with insight and answers. The same thing is true for coffee grounds. Step four, interpretation of symbols and patterns. Remember that tassiomancy is highly personal and the key is to use your gut feelings. It might take a while for any significant images or symbols to appear, but once they do, you can be sure that they will have profound meaning. Don't just look for large images. There will be smaller dotted ones around, adding to the overall picture. Look at the images as a collective and interpret what you believe means to you. Intuition is the key. There is no right or wrong way to interpret what jumps out to you, as it is an incredibly personal process. If a particular image provides feelings of comfort 
or discomfort, these are all significant feelings regardless of what the image is in itself. Generally speaking, the images produced by tea leaves will fall into four main categories, animals, nature, objects, and mythical creatures. However, if an image appears that isn't listed by any of these various Tassumancy guides out there, you can still interpret this according to what you believe best fits. Like in dreams, the symbols you'll find will be highly subjective and personal. Remember, on the description below, I have linked the book which includes some of the most commonly patterns and possible meanings. But remember, Tassumancy is highly personal, and the key is to use your gut feelings. The symbols you find will be highly subjective. The Lenormand divination system evolved from Tassumancy. Its cards contain images that are often formed by tea leaves and coffee grounds. If you read Lenormand, you can apply these meanings too to Tassiomancy. Step 6. Close the session. Write down the patterns and note your interpretations if you think you need help remembering them. Then thank your higher power for the message. Similar to other forms of divination, when we focus closely on our intentions and emotions, the residue left behind in the drinking vessel reflects our thoughts, feelings, and experiences revealed as images. So now I'm going to do a sample reading on a personal inquiry as a demonstration to this video. So on this section of the video, I want to do a reading on a personal matter using Tassiomancy. I'm going to share something personal that's been going through my mind during the last couple of months. So I'm 50 years old, I'll be 51 in three months, and I'm kind of at a crossroad in my life. Sometimes I feel that I still have maybe 25, 30 years, productive years, that I can take care of myself, and I wish I could do a lot of other things I really enjoy, like focus on my art, travel, spend more time with my family, etc. My job, I really enjoy my job. I give people who work with me purpose, direction and lead them in areas that help them not only professionally but personally in many ways and i like the financial compensation of my position but it comes at a cost <clears throat> i spend more time at work than at home i barely have time to do many things that fulfill me internally and externally my life is basically just work 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 and like I said, I'm at a crossroad in which I'm thinking if I should change my career path and find another occupation, which allows me to have more, more of a balance between work, financial planning, and more free time to be able to do those things that I really want to do. Of course, at the same time, I'm still productive in the workforce, so I'm focusing on the financial aspect right now, thinking that years ahead of me in my life, I'll be more relaxed to do other things that I really enjoy. You know, over the years, especially with COVID back in 2020, and over many years, I've known young people who, for one reason or another, have lost their lives in such a sudden and unexpected way. That has put my life in perspective of how fleeting and fragile our physical existence is. So, in this life balance topic, I'm not really seeking for a definitive answer because this is a process that will continue to readjust with many fluid ongoing circumstances as years go by. I just want some type of inspiration or comfort for these thoughts. So I come to Tassiomancy. <clears throat> All right, let's start. So I'm going to use black tea. I love English breakfast and Irish breakfast, mostly as a daytime tea. Every night I drink Egyptian chamomile, and I like my morning tea a little bit dark, so I'm going to put a little bit extra of tea leaves. Some hot water. And I'm going to swirl the tea counterclockwise. And I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes, three to four minutes, more or less. All right, one thing I like to do in this process before the reading itself is that I like to do a pre-reading, uh, sort of like an introduction to the reading, looking at the tea leaves as they form shapes in the swirling process, getting kind of, like I said, an introduction message. And right now what I'm seeing looks like a tree, 
right in this part of the cup, close to the handle, which represents the immediate situation. And, and a bird on the other side of the cup, the side of the external situations. So what do these images mean to me? The symbol of the tree is one of the most ancient symbols. It represents stability, strength, wisdom, calmness, and growth, among other positive things. A bird flying is another lotus symbol. It means, it represents to me change, looking at things from a different point of view, movement. I think both things represent my current situation. Both images have positive and negative connotations as well. You know, on the flip side, trees can also mean being tethered to circumstances, um, evolving, but still something that is hard to root out. Birds too can be a symbol of nervousness, and we see that as one of the meanings of the bird imagery in Lenormand. Something unstable, something volatile. I don't know if you noticed, but birds can be very reactive to things coming in their environment. They can die of stress easily. Um, any minimal change of something getting in their surroundings, they just fly off. So both symbols can go both ways, and they're actually applicable to this, my current situation. I feel right now very stable in my life, and I'm very happy with what I have. My issue is time balance, stability versus movement, security versus possibly anxiety. So this reading is accurate to my current situation. And although not common in Tassiomancy, I do this pre-reading in my practice. So I'm going to let this tea cool for a few minutes, and I'm going to forward the video and then come back to do the tea sipping and the reading. All right, <clears throat> all three minutes pass by and I'm going to do another swirling and then I'm going to drink the tea. Now, this is interesting. Here I see floating on the foreground what looks like in an aardvark. See if you can see it. Aardvarks are native to Africa. And I know this because I like strange animals. And they use their long snouts to search for food. It's a totem animal that, you know, to me, it invites us to dig up hidden information while at the same time showing you how to tap into your inner wisdom. In other words, go inwards to search your answers. Over here, I see a lynx. Lynxes are native to Europe, Asia, and I think on the northern part only of North America. So they are very important figures in the mythologies and folklore of many cultures in these regions. Lynx represents determination, discretion, intuition, clairvoyance, and patience by the way they hunt. Um, over here I see a woodpecker. Spiritually, woodpeckers represents opportunities, creativity, optimism, courage, motivation, revival, um, balance, communication, protection, and discernment. I usually get woodpeckers on, on both trees of my patio, on my house patio. <clears throat> and you know, the combination of these animals is like saying, you know, the aardvark, look within the lynx, use your intuition, and if you see it's looking, it looks towards the aardvark, not towards the woodpecker, the action, the change, the pecking of your anxieties and your thoughts, right? So <clears throat> I'm going to drink the tea now and see what's the final message or the overall image of the message. So I left a little bit of the tea because I put a little bit extra of the tea leaves. So I left a little bit extra of the liquid too, to be able to do the swirl. Now, there's two ways for you to turn the cup upside down. You can either directly turn the cup inside down on the plate, or you can remove the plate, cover it, and then turn it both upside down. Whatever works best for you. Both ways are valid. Um, I did notice, though, that after doing it several times, that turning the cup on the plate creates less of a mess than putting the saucer on top, because if you put the saucer first and then turn them, some of the liquid may spill. So if you go directly on the plate, you know, any liquid will be contained there. So we're going to swirl it three times counterclockwise and then turn it upside down and do the reading.
We're going to leave it upside down for one minute. Now we're going to turn the cup on the plate three times counterclockwise, ending with the handle towards here. And we're going to tap the bottom of the cup three times. And let's see what we got. <clears throat> the handle of the cup should always be facing towards you. It's your connection to the cup. All right. So as I do the reading, I'm going to freeze the image. So it's easier for you to see as I read. I don't know why, but this image. All I see are references to birds. <laughs> so let me explain what I see over here. I see a tree, a dried out tree. Growth, withering, and stability with it. Withering as well. A bird with what looks like a deformed circle, representing anxiety over possibly unrealistic expectations. Over here, a mouse looking outwards. Mice, to me, represents wisdom. You know, we see Lord Ganesha with a mouse, which represents learning and wisdom. They also represent intelligence and strategic thinking. You know, a lot of people relate them with... Decay? No. And that's one of the things that I don't like when people associate animals with negative things. When we want to say something in a negative connotation, you're a cow, you're a pig, you're a chicken, you're a dog, you know, and these animals, they have their own ways of behaving and their environment. We are the ones who assign these negative things. So to me, mice, they're not a negative animal. They don't represent decay. You know, if you have mouse coming into your house, my opinion is you're inviting them by leaving things that they can eat. Anyhow, <clears throat> that's a whole different topic. But to me, mice represent intelligence and strategic thinking. They're survivors. All right. Up here, I see an eagle heading to its nest. So it represents to me strength and security, bravery, power and freedom, but also self-expression, enlightenment and spirit. So in this case, the overall message is to stay put on my current path, be strong and find security and balance in my current circumstances, not only physical, but also emotional and spiritual. It's saying to me, enjoy your stability and look for those things that I really enjoy in spite of how little time seems to be, because it's what fills me at the end. It's quality over quantity. I like sometimes reading the residue on the plate as well. Here, I see what looks like a rider standing over a creature, a mythical bull, I will say. He's not sitting, but standing. So it's like saying, stand to the strong force of life's instability. Conquer the beast of your fears and your worries. Just conquer. I can go further on the reading, but I'll leave you with that. Once I'm done with my tea readings... I write down the images, my interpretation, and how these images influence my current situation and thoughts. I love Tassiomancy, honestly, and I recommend you to do it, even if you don't want to do it for spiritual reasons. It can also be done for psychological reasons, you know, as a psychometrical tool for personal reflection on things that could be on the back of your mind. Whatever the reason, it can be a great tool for self-improvement and growth. I hope you enjoyed this video and please let me know what you think about this reading. If you have personal experience with Tassumancy, share with us your personal experience on the comments below. And if you know anyone who will benefit from this video, please share it. This is a great divination tool and I definitely recommend you doing it. Thank you very much for watching and as always, blessings to all. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, and share it with someone who might benefit from it. And click the subscribe button for more future videos about tarot, divination, and other esoteric topics.